I'm Roman Yossi of the National Predator. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. And before we get to the No Has Step in Hockey coverage, first, let me introduce you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're going to educate about the show. Click on that merchandise tab. Going to take you straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you come to know and love and expect from Renegades Puck are still available in our online store, whether that is socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets, or so much more. Something like 88 different items with our logo on it. Best said, we've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is of critical importance to this operation, so here's how you can support the Renegades of Puck. You can find us on X and Threads. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook, TikTok as well. So please take just a second and give us a follow, give us a like, give us a subscription on any of those different platforms, whatever it is you prefer. Jump in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck YouTube. We sure could use your assistance right over there. We sure to appreciate all of our new subscribers. So check us out by searching Renegades of Puck on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. That's where you'll find the latest episodes of Renegades of Puck TV, all of our preview segments, our recap segments, and all of our different specialty segments. We post them all there on our YouTube channel. Thanks to the Full Press Predators Network, the Full Press NHL Network, we have gone from local to global in 2023 and continued that momentum well on into 2024. So stick taps love and respect to everyone who's checked out the show and helped make us an incredible success in the podcast world. You can find us on Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon, several other platforms. Just search Renegades of Puck in your preferred platform today and stick taps love and respect to everybody at the Full Press NHL Network for all of the hard work they've done behind the scenes to help make us such a great success. Venmo, that is how you can support the show financially. Just go to Venmo and search Renegades of Puck or scan the QR code that is currently on your screen. Every dollar goes a long way to helping the Renegades of Puck and we sure do appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time and helping us out with several different large projects over the last couple of years since we first launched this project. We always need the help. We always need the support. And thanks to generous renegades like you watching and listening right now, we have been able to make some significant upgrades and we sure do appreciate that. Stick taps, love and respect. It means a lot to have the support from such a great audience out there. It's great to be in the trenches with each and every one of you. Now, listen, I know it's time for the no half step in hockey coverage. So let me deliver the goods at at this moment in hockey history, we pause to recap the 2023-2024 NHL season for the Nashville Predators. We're going to do this in chunks of five games at a time. So here we go. It's time for the Rebirth Sports Season Recap. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to 11-28 of the year 2023 with the National Brewers. We're welcoming the Pittsburgh Penguins to Bridgestone Arena. Head coach Andrew Brunette deployed his lines and combinations in the following way. It is 11-7 again for the National Brewers and your forward combinations are Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Sherwood, Parson, and Evangelista, Trennan, and Sissons make up your third line. Smith, McCarron, and Tomasino make up your fourth line. McDonough and Yossi on the first pair. Luzon and Carey, Fab Row and Barry. Shen, again, is your seventh defenseman in this game. UC Saros gets the star on home ice for the first of two meetings this season between the National Predators and the Pittsburgh Penguins. 39 seconds into the game, it's Jari coming up with a save on Yossi. It's the first shot on goal of the game. At 2.54 of the first period, it's Jari coming up with a save on Michael McCarron at 3.29 of the first period. UC Saros comes up with a save on O'Connor at close range. 3.56, another save on Pedersen. Then we go all the way to 7.12. Then we find Saros coming up with a save on Jeff Carter at 8.58 of the first period. It's Tristan Jari coming with a save on Philip Forsberg at 10.20 of the first period. We've got our first goal of the game. It's Michael McCarron with his second goal of the season. A deflection of Barry's long shot. A one-hopper deflected it down, skipped off the ice, and into the net. 
McCarron's second goal of the season gives the Nashville Predators a 1-0 lead at Bridgestone Arena. 11:26 of the first period, it's UC Soros coming with a save on Jake Gensel's backhand. At 11:38 of the first, it's Soros with a save on Eric Carlson. 13:51, Jari comes up with a save on McDonough's long shot. At 14:14, Carter is off to the box. First penalty of the game. Two minutes for tripping. Philip Tomasino, a great job rushing the puck at the blue line and earning a power play for his Nashville Predators team. We see Jari come up with a save on Yakov Trenin, but other than that, a very strong penalty kill by the Pittsburgh Penguins living up to the reputation they had coming in with their NHL ranking. Just not much zone time and not much available to set up for the Nashville Predators. That's 16-19 of the first period. It's Jari coming with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. Then at 18-38, it is Michael McCarron with his second goal of the period, his third goal of the season, giving the Nashville Predators a 2-0 lead. This was some incredible rebound jam right here. Rebound, top corner, put back while flying through the air. Michael McCarron bringing the absolute jam here on this play. So his third goal of the season gives the Preds a 2-0 lead. We hit the intermission with the Pittsburgh Penguins out shooting the Nashville Predators 12-9, but Michael McCarron leads the Penguins 2-0. We flip over to the clean sheet of the second period. We're 58 seconds in, and it's Luzon off the box. Two minutes for hooking on of Kenny Malkin. Preds about to be shorthanded for their first time in this game, and UC Saros is about to have to check in. UC Saros comes up with a save on Gensel, then follows it up with a save on Guinea Malkin, then another save on Sidney Crosby, and a fourth save on Riley Smith's redirect from the low slot. An incredible tracking situation by UC Saros, really putting his skill set on display during this penalty kill for the Nashville Predators. UC Saros bends does not break. Four total saves over the course of the power play for Pittsburgh. At 345 out of the second period, it's Jari coming up with a save on Tomasino. At 549 of the second period, it's Evgeny Malkin's 10th goal of the season, getting Pittsburgh on the board. This was a bar down upper 90 snipe after Smith's behind the back sick drop pass. I mean, there were so many great things happening as far as skill goes in the hockey world. Uh, this was pretty incredible. Malkin off the bench on a clean line change looking for the hunt, and he is getting his 10th goal of the season. Now, Nashville still leading 2-1 to one after Malkin's goal, but just what an absolute sick, sick goal by Evgeny Malkin here in this game. 644 on the second period. It's McCarron versus Ludwig. Five minutes each. A fairly good scrap right there at Center Ice at Bridge Center. 710 of the second period. Saros comes with a save on Pedersen. 742. Saros a save on Smith. 810. Saros another save on Carlson. 926. We find Harkins going off to the box. Two minutes for tripping. Colton Sissons earning a power play for his Nashville Purs. Jari one save on Tomasino, but the PK for the Pens. Again, very strong in this situation. We're past the halfway point in this game in a 1207. Saros back to work coming up with a save on Gensel at 1230. Before the Preds generate some offense, Philip Forsberg gets a shot on net, stopped by Jari, 13-17. Evangelista on the same shift comes up with another shot on goal for the National Purs. Jari turns this one aside. 14 minutes even, Saros comes with a save on Nieto at 14-21. Saros comes with a save on Rust drive to the net. He cut across the top of the crease and tries to jam the puck home. Saros is able to deny. 15-25 at the second, Jari comes with a save on Luzon. 16-26, Saros will save on Ludwig. 16-47, Saros a save on Carlson. We go to the back of the sheet, and we find it 1920 of the second period. It's Pedersen off to the box, two minutes four, holding Colton Sissons, earning his Nashville Predators another power play in this game. With only 40 seconds to go in the period, you think not much is going to happen, but Jari has to be strong as he comes up with a save on Philip Forsberg, and then Jari comes up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. As the period expires, the Pittsburgh Penguins dramatically outshooting the Preds through two periods, 25-18, to 18, but the Preds will be on a power play carrying over for one minute and 20 seconds going into the third period. We flip over to the third period in the clean sheet and we find Philip Forsberg hitting the crossbar on that Nashville Predators power play and we find the captain Roman Yossi getting another scoring opportunity before the expiration of this power play but Jari is able to answer and respond. Right after the Penguins good penalty kill against the Predators it's at 226 of the third period that Rust comes up with his 10th goal of 
of the season. It was a long shot off of Luzon Crosby doing the hard work in front of the net, bringing the strong traffic and the jam, setting the screen, and also tying up Luzon, which is exactly whose pant leg the puck went in off of. So we have a fresh game, and you could hear the contingent of Penguins men, and they were numerous and belligerent at this point in the third period as the Penguins tied the game up. They were really feeling this two-goal comeback by the visiting team. So Preds 2, Penguins 2, 226 into the third period at 356 of the third period. It's Jari coming up with a save on Luke Evangelista at 528 of the third period. It's Smith off to the box, two minutes for hooking. That's going to be Cole Smith for the National Predators. UC Saros has to come up with a save on Gensel with Malkin just lurking at the back post. If this shot had made it through, no doubt Malkin would have redirected it into the net easily at the back post for the third Penguins goal, but the Preds are able to deny and the PK holds strong from that moment forward. At 748 of the third period of scoring, chances are starting to become reduced and more limited. Saros comes up with a save on Crosby with the one hopper from the neutral zone. Never a bad idea to throw the puck on net. And when you get a good bounce, as we've seen at Bridgestone Arena over the years, uh, weird things can happen. 1029 in the third period. Now, UC Saros comes up with a save on Harkins at 1342. Jari comes up with a save on Yuso Parson. 1402. Jari, another save on O'Reilly. We go to the 17 minute mark after a couple of shifts of stalemate and Saros is coming up with a save on Rust at 1743 of the third period. Saros comes up with a save on Jeff Carter 1858. Jari clocks spin and goes back to work against the Predators with a big save on Gus Nyquist at 1942. Jari comes up with another save on Sissons. And at the 1956 mark one more save on Philip Tomasino who was buzzing the zone all night long. This puck was destined to go just inside the post and Jari kicks out the leg and kicks it aside with just four seconds remaining in regulation to preserve the tie and get Pittsburgh one point. And the National Predators also, of course, earn a point as we hit the end of regulation hockey tied at two apiece. The Pittsburgh Penguins outshoot the Nashville Predators for regulation 31 to 25. Now we go to the three on three overtime and we are just 14 seconds into overtime. And it's Philip Forsberg with his 12th goal of the season. It's the game winner for the Nashville Predators. Three to two is the final. Now let's go back and talk about this one. It was a rush from his own end. He picked up the puck on the half wall and he carried it from his own zone all the way through the neutral zone. A burst of speed goes in on Jari and just absolutely snipes with high skill finish. It's Philip Forsberg carrying the puck all the way the length of the ice and finishing the puck on the first play of overtime. It was O'Reilly tied up with his man at the blue line, but you can watch this thing time and time again. O'Reilly is able to do the splits. It looks like uh, possibly anyone else uh, might have injured themselves somehow. I know that I would have, but O'Reilly is able to maintain the splits and keep his skate on the blue line. There was no chance there was offside. I know that they stopped and they looked at it for a minute and the coach, the Penguins, was quite upset about this thing, but Philip Forsberg just an incredible goal to win this game for the National Predators. Three to two is your final, and the Pittsburgh Penguins do end up out shooting the National Predators 31 to 26, which for the National Predators, the winning streak continues on. Now, listen, both of these teams were 10 and 10 coming into the night, so it was not a surprise to see them both getting a point. The National Predators earning the extra point on home ice. Philip Forsberg earning the extra point on home ice with his team leading 12th goal of the season. Again, incredible rush out there on the ice from his own zone all the way down into the offensive zone and then beating Tristan Jari. So for the National Predators, they come away with this victory. They continue the winning streak and this game wraps up 3-2 to two at Bridgestone Arena. That's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. You gave us 10 minutes. We gave you the entire game. Stats, analysis, box score, and so much more coming up next on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant, Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, Go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been. 
what you were going through and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to November 30th, the year 2023, when the Nashville Predators were welcoming in the Minnesota Wild and their former head coach, John Hines, current and new head coach in Nashville. Predators Andrew Burnett deployed his line combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Sherwood, Parson, and Evangelista, Trennan, and Sissons make up your third line. Smith, McCarron, and Tomasino make up your fourth line. So that's right, 11 forwards and seven defensemen. Again, for this game, McDonough and Yossi, Luzon, and Carrier, Barry, and Shen, and Fabro make up your defensive pairings. UC Soros, gets the start against the Central Division rival Minnesota Wild on home ice. We are just 50 seconds into the first period of this game, and it's Gustafson coming in with a save on Philip Forsberg. It is the first shot on goal of the game at 158 of the first period. Saros coming in with a save on Johansson, his first save of the game. At 247 of the first period, Gustafson coming in with a save on Tomasino. Point blank range, Tomasino had a golden and glorious opportunity to score right here, and he was robbed by Gustafson with the glove. 319 of the first period. Saros coming up with this save on Duarte 358. Rossi off to the box. Two minutes for hooking our first penalty of the game season. Natural Predators on a power play and Gustafson coming up with a save on Nyquist from the slot. A great shot here by Nyquist, but overall a strong penalty kill by the 32nd rated penalty kill unit in the NHL. Just after the PK is completed, 608 of the first period. It's Duarte coming up with his third goal of the season. Barry is beaten to the rebound in front in the low slot just above the crease area. So, Dewar gets Minnesota on the board first and with a one nothing lead. At 7.30 of the first period, it's Kaprizov off to the box. Two minutes for interference on Carey. This was more of a blindside hit headshot that was not necessarily appropriately called. Carrier left the game injured with all of the things that the referees have at their disposal now as far as review and tools. Uh, it was interesting that this was not called in a different way. So Kaprizov just off to the box. Two minutes. I think Minnesota catches a break on this exchange. Gustafson comes with a save on Sissons and another strong and really aggressive penalty kill by the Minnesota Wild. 10-15 in the first period. It's Gustafson coming up with a save on Smith and we have lots of physical play and lots of big hits taking place all over the ice over the next couple of shifts before at 14-1 we find Middleton scoring his fourth goal of the season. He drives the net and puts the backhand finish off for Saros. Challenged for offsides, upheld good goal. 2-0 Minnesota but also a delay of game penalty now on the Nashville Predators for a failed coach's challenge and Kaprizov is cashing in for the Minnesota Wild with this. Seventh goal of the season was a one-timer from the half wall and ends up going through the five hole. Saros kind of kicks it in with his own in interior of the pad Minnesota now immediately has a 3-0 lead in this game 15-37 of the first period. Saros comes up with the save on Maroon. 15-44. Shen and Felino have a go. They're off to the box. Five minutes each. Shen was particularly aggressive in this fight. 16-43 of the first period. Gustafson comes up with the save on Luzon. 17-53. Yossi's off to the box. Two minutes for delay of game. Puck over the glass. Saros comes up with a save on Kaprizov. Then Saros comes up with a save on Eriksson Ek. Plus the jam two times by Zuccarello, which leads to a huge scrum after the whistle. Luzon on and Fabro, Boldy, and Kaprizov all off to the box, all of them getting two-minute roughing penalties. Saros comes with a save on Goudreau on the continuation of the power play with the end of the first period, with Minnesota out shooting Nashville 13 to 10, leading 3 to nothing. On to the clean sheet, and the Nashville Prayers looking to rebound in the second period, and Maroon's on the board at 143, his third of the season. It's a perfect deflection at the top of the crease. He was able to keep his stick loose, and he was able to make a great play, giving Minnesota now a 4-0 lead. That's when UC Soros would make his exit and Kevin Lankinen would enter the game. At two minutes even of the second period, it's Gustafson coming with a save on Ryan McGunn at 5.57. Lankinen a save on Latori at 6.28. Gustafson a save on Philip Forsberg at 8.04. Gustafson another save on Tomasino, this time on a partial breakaway at 10.25 of the second period. Gustafson comes with a save on Sissons at 11.12 of the second period. It's Duar with his fourth goal of the season. It ended up 
being a two on O, Shen couldn't make the play in the neutral zone. Multiple players able to slip behind the D and get in on Lankanen for the easy finish, making the game five to nothing here, only midway through. At 12.50 of the second period, it's Lankanen coming with a save on Goudreau at 13.58. It's Gustafson coming with a save on Sissons at 15.04. Gustafson comes with a save on Philip Forsberg at 16.16 of the second period. It's Caprizov off, off to the box, two minutes for slashing. He certainly didn't make any friends in Nashville tonight. Gustafson comes with a save on Yossi during the penalty kill. Gustafson then another save on Barry, this time with the knob of the stick catching a break right here on what was a really, really well-placed shot, uh, except for the knob of the stick being in the way. 1955 of the second period, Fabro off to the box, two minutes, four hooking, so it's just five seconds to go in the period. We'll have the carryover of 155 into the third period. The shots on goal at the end of the second period, just to go back to that. Minnesota out shooting Nashville 21 to 18. We're now into the third period. A carryover of a minute and 55 seconds on the Dante Fabro penalty. A decent PK overall by Nashville. But you got to say, was Minnesota really pushing at this point in the game with such a big lead? At 2.36 of the third period, it's Yusuf Parson getting on the board for the Nashville Predators, getting that zero off the board and turning it to a one. Parson's fourth goal of the season was a great deflection of Ryan McDonough's shot from out high. Looked like it could have been a double deflection. Forsberg might have touched it first on the way in before Parson got it, but the uh, official score sheet has it as Parson in from McDonough and Evangelista. So Parson's fourth goal of the season finally gets the Preds on the board in this game. Still 5-1, to one, though, in favor of the Minnesota Wild. At 4.34 of the third period, it's Lankin and coming up with a save on Erickson Eck at 5.04. Of the third period, it's Gustafson coming up with a save on Philip Forsberg. At 6.40 of the third period, it's Lankanen coming up with a save on Rossi. At 8.01, Lankanen comes up with a save, another save on Eriksson Eck. At 9.47 of the third period, it's Duar, his fifth goal of the season. He kicked the puck in. There is no denying it. There's no doubt about it. It was reviewed. It was upheld. It ends up being a hat trick. But to go back to it, uh, this has got to be just given stick taps as a really slick, hard, aggressive play. Uh, he was facing contact from the D, and he got away with kicking the puck into the net. Rarely are you going to get away with that one, but he kicked the puck into the net, and it was obvious, but there was not enough evidence to overturn it, so Duar is rewarded for going to the hard areas, bringing the jam, and that uh, makes it 6-1 to one in favor of the Minnesota Wild at Bridgestone Arena. At the 10:37 mark of the third period, Middleton's off to the box. Two minutes for tripping on Luke Evangelista. Evangelista still making things happen out there. He was good and aggressive right here, cutting across the top of the offensive zone and drawing a tripping penalty on Middleton. Gustafson comes up with a save on Barry, but that would be it for the Nashville Predators on this power play, unfortunately. Again, the 32nd ranked penalty kill in the NHL coming into this game was the Minnesota Wild, but they were certainly very good and certainly very aggressive, and they got the job done in this game. We move on to back to 5-on-5 five five hockey. We see at 13-26 of the third period. It's Lankanen coming up with a save on Matt Zuccarello. Zuccarello still buzzing all over in this game at 15-13 of the third period. It's Philip Tomasino off to the box. Two minutes for high sticking. Initially, it kind of looked like Tomasino got tripped, uh, but Tomasino ended up kind of tripping himself, and then his stick goes flying into the air and catches Maroon in the face. Uh, he is off to the box. Two minutes for high sticking. And Dewar is putting the puck in the net on the power play. It was a rebound putback, but challenged for offside so Dewar's fourth goal of the game ends up coming off of the board so no goal right here and Dewar was just all over the damn rink tonight six to one is the score you take that seventh goal off of the board and six to one ends up being your final in this game in favor of the Minnesota Wild 31 shots on goal for Minnesota 27 for the Nashville Predators and for the Nashville Predators, it was uh, as simple as this. They were outplayed from start to finish in this game for an entire 60 minutes. They didn't get the call that they wanted on Kaprizov early in the first period. And yes, Kaprizov was a difference maker in this game offensively. He typically is. The rough stuff, the hits in the corners, that's not typically what you associate Kaprizov with. The rest of the, what he put onto the box score, uh, you do. So for the Nashville Predators, they may not have gotten the call they wanted, but they could not not let that affect them for the next 55 minutes of this game, and it seems like it did affect them. Uh, the National Predators power play 
unable to convert at all against the worst rated penalty kill in the league. And John Hines comes back to Nashville and gets a little measure of revenge. He'll say it had nothing to do with getting revenge and it's all good, but he was fired by the Nashville Predators at the end of last season. And now he's got his first opportunity in his second game with the Minnesota Wild. He's come to Nashville and picked up a victory, his second as head coach of the Minnesota Wild. So the Nashville Predators suffer one of their worst defeats on home ice this season. You gave us 10 minutes. We gave you the entire game. It's called the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap coming up next on the Renegades of the digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the Renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to December the 2nd of the year, 2023, when the National Predators were closing out the regular season series with the New York Rangers welcoming them into Bridgestone Arena for the one and only time this regular season. Head coach Andrew Brunette deploys his lines in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Sherwood, Parson, and Evangelista, Trenton, Sissons, and Smith, Foodie, McCarron, and Tomasino. Your defensive pairings are McDonough, Yossi, Luzon, and Fabro, Stastny, recent call-up, and Shen, Carrier, out injured week to week week, Lankinen gets the start in net on home ice. So back to the traditional 12-6 alignment for the National Purge from forward to defenseman. We are 148 into the first period. Igor Shesterkin coming up with a save on Colton Sissons. First shot on goal of the game at 233 of the first period. Shesterkin coming up with another save on Foodie off of the rush. McCarron crashing the net hard. 405 into the first period. Lankinen coming up with a save on Gustafson's backhand with the top of the mask at 508 of the first. It's Shesterkin coming up with a save on McDonough. But at 619 of the first period, the National Purs are breaking through on Ryan O'Reilly's 11th goal of the season. It gives the National Purs a 1-0 lead here in the first first period. It's Foodie's pass across to O'Reilly. He got the puck over the blue line delayed to try to hold during the line change. O'Reilly first over the boards goes straight to the net and gets rewarded with the pass from Foodie. Goes blocker side for the finish on Shesterkin. O'Reilly his 11th goal of the season. 645 of the first. Shesterkin comes up with a save on Nyquist. 921 of the first. Lankanen comes up with a save on Gustafson. 934 of the first period. Lankanen comes up with a save on Nick Bonino's deflection. Of course that guy always goes to the hard Aries. 10-31 of the first. It's Lankanen coming up with a save on Jimmy VC. At 11-22 of the first period, Igor Shesterkin comes up with a save on O'Reilly from the low circle. O'Reilly looking for his second of the period. 11-24 of the second first period. It's going to be Shesterkin coming up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi, plus Philip Tomasino's follow-up times two on the rebound opportunities. 12-50 of the first. It's Lankanen coming with a save on Lafreniere. At 4-15 of the first period, it's Barclay off the box. Two minutes, four tripping on Stastny, the first penalty of the the game. Shesterkin comes up with a save on O'Reilly's deflection. Sissons is bringing the jam on this play. The captain, Roman Yossi, would convert on this power play with his fifth goal of the season. It was a wrist shot from the slot off the post and in both goals coming from similar areas and shooting in the same area as well. Yossi was given so much time and space, he carried the puck to the middle of the ice and just picked the shot that he wanted, and it was a good one. Natural Purs have a 2 to nothing lead over the New York Rangers on home ice. Now, very tight last couple of minutes of this period, the last several shifts, where the Rangers rebalancing the ice. The Predators had just run all over the Rangers throughout the first 15 minutes of this game, but the New York Rangers definitely even things out here towards the end of the period. The Predators do outshoot the Rangers by quite a bit in the first, 17-8. to eight. We move into the second period, see how the New York Rangers would regroup, and just 31 seconds in, it's Truba getting his second goal of the season, captain of the New York Rangers. Trocek makes the pass from behind the net and catches Lankinen, looking the other way over his shoulder as Truba had plenty of net to put the puck into. That gets the Rangers on the board. Preds do still lead 2-1 to one on home ice. 
156 into the second period. Lankin and coming up with the save on Wheeler. 242 out the second. Lingren's off to the box. Two minutes for hooking. Sherwood would hit the crossbar with a glorious scoring opportunity from the slot area. 515 of the second period. It's just Sterkin coming up with a save on Ryan McDonough. 558 of the second. Lankin comes up with a save on Panarin's backhand off of the rush. He kicks the toe all the way out and gets full extension to make this save. At 6.50 of the second period, it's the Nashville Purrs going to the box. Too many men on the ice. Two minutes right here for the Nashville Purrs. Tough break right here as Shen jumps onto the rink as the puck is being played over towards the bench area. The Preds are going to be shorthanded, but it's Colton Sissons doing the work. Coming up with his seventh goal of the season. Shorthanded breakaway goes glove side for the finish. That's Colton Sissons' third shorthanded goal. Of the season. Out of his seven, he has three shorthanded goals. It's like what Jankowski did last year for this National Predators team. Sissons now seven goals on the season. Gives the Preds a three to one lead, but they have to go back to work on the PK. And that's where Lankin is coming up with a save on Wheeler. Then another save on Panarin as the power play is expiring or just after it expires. Kreider puts the puck in the net. His 14th goal of the season. He batted the rebound out of midair. Just the absolute most incredible hand eye coordination right here tipped the puck up in the air in the first place, then knocked it out of midair and perfectly into the net. There's nothing anyone can do to stop a play of that much skill. The Predators still lead 3-2 to two thanks to that season's shorthanded goal, but the the New York Rangers come away with the power play goal. 9 3 of the second. Parson goes off the box. Two minutes for boarding on Nick Benino. And it's Vinny Trocek scoring his sixth goal of the season. It was a slot redirect just to the top corner. It was just top level execution by the New York Rangers across the board on this power play. 3 3 hockey game midway through. 10 28 of the second. Lankin comes up with a save on Brodzinski. The 10th shot on goal of the period for the New York Rangers after they only had eight in total in the first. 13 42 of the second. Lingren's off the box. Two minutes for high sticking. Shister comes up with a save on Forsberg. Rebound goes off of the post after hitting Shesterkin's glove at 1549 of the second. Shesterkin comes up with a save on Fabro. 1746. Shesterkin comes up with a save on O'Reilly's deflection at 1818. Shesterkin comes up with a save on Nyquist. The Preds trying to rebalance the ice after giving up that third goal to the New York Rangers. A huge scrum at the 20 minute mark of the final whistle. It took quite some time to get the players separated off the rink, but no penalties were called during the exchange. So we hit the end of the second period with the score at 3-3 three to three and the New York Rangers being outshot by the National Predators 27-18. to 18. We flip over to the back of the sheet and we go to the third period. Even hockey game, 53 seconds into the third period. It's Igor Shesterkin coming up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. At 224 of the third period, it's Cully off to the box. Two minutes, four high sticking. Shesterkin comes up with a big save on the captain, Roman Yossi. Then another big save on Colton Sisson's deflection in the slot area. Great job by Colton Sisson's getting to the hard area. At 510 of the third period, it is Lindgren with his first goal of the season. It is a long Long shot off of the defenseman, Jeremy Luzon. We've talked about this so many times this season. The National Predators have fallen victim to long shots, hitting their own players. Friendly fire in front of the net, putting the puck past Lankinen, giving the New York Rangers their first lead of the game. The Rangers were down by a score of 2 to nothing and 3-1, to one, and now lead 4-3. to three. We are at 6.20 into the third period now, and Shesterkin's coming up the save on O'Reilly at 9.39. Shesterkin's coming up with a save on Luke Evangelista, and you're going to be hearing this several more times. 10.48 of the third period, Shesterkin comes up with a save on Ryan McDonough at 11.56 of the third. Shesterkin comes up with another save on Yossi. Shesterkin gets to take just a brief break, because at 13.11, Lankinen comes up with a save on Jimmy Vc, and then at 13.49, Lankinen comes up with another save on Cully. At 15.40, the Preds, though, back on offense, and they are just all over the New York Rangers here in the latter part of this game. So at the 15-40 mark, we find Parson in. He can't tuck or jam the puck in at the post. He had Shesterkin down and beaten and just could not get the puck to go. Multiple defenders down on the ice trying to help their net mind Shesterkin, and they did just enough. Nobody got caught for a penalty for closing hand on the puck or anything like that. So Parson in with a glorious opportunity to tie the game up just could not do so. At 16-26 of the third period, 
It's just Sturkin coming up with save on Colton. This is in 1633. Just Sturkin comes up with a save on Nyquist. Great deflection at 1758 of the third period. It's just Sturkin coming up with a save on Sherwood with the extra attacker and the Nashville Prayers absolutely buzzing all over the ice. At the 1903 mark, we find just Sturkin coming up with a save on Yossi plus the follow up by Nyquist. Keandre Miller for the New York Rangers would hit the post with the empty net, giving the Preds one or two more opportunities to get down the rink, but they would be unable to convert. So as much pressure as the Nashville Predators were putting on the New York Rangers here in the third period, it was Igor Shesterkin absolutely standing like a wall, standing tall and getting the New York Rangers a 4-3 to three victory. An impressive comeback. The New York Rangers had already dropped one of the Predators at home against Madison Square Garden. Now they come to Bridgestone Arena and come back from down 3-1 and win this game 4-3 with a goal in the third period. Lindgren's first of the season. So 4-3 is your final. The Nashville Preds end up generating 41 shots on net to the New York Rangers 27. So the Preds went from 17 in the first to 27 at the end of the second to 41 at the end of the game. The Nashville Preds certainly poured the pressure on the New York Rangers. Igor Shesterkin showed why he is a Vezina Trophy winner. The New York Rangers showed why they are the best team in the NHL at this point in the season. Like professionals, they got themselves down early, and then they found their skates, found their game, and they started playing incredible hockey the rest of the way. They dominated large portions of this game after the first period, and they come away with the one-goal victory. For the Nashville Predators, not all is doom and gloom. You stepped up and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best team in the NHL, and you fell by one goal in the third period. They split the season series with the New York Rangers, one-to-one. -one. They get two out of possible four points from the Rangers. Not bad for this Nashville Predators team. That's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. You gave us 10 minutes. We gave you the entire game. Box score, analysis, stats, so much more coming up on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to December 3rd of the year 2023 when the Nashville Prayers were in Buffalo to take on the Sabres on the second day of back-to-backs over the course of this weekend. Andrew Burnett deployed his line combinations, defense pairings in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Sherwood, Parson, and Evangelista, Trennan, Sissons, and Smith make up your third line. Jankowski freshly called up from Milwaukee, getting an opportunity with McCarron and Tomasino. McDonough and Yossi, Luzon and Fabro, Stastny, and Shen are your defensive pairings. UC Saros gets an opportunity to start in net. 110 into the first period, it's Lukanen coming up with a save on Yakov Trenin, the first shot on goal of the game. At 120 of the first period, it's Cousins coming up with a shot that has to be stopped by UC Saros, his first touch of the game. 207 of the first, Lukanen a save on Jankowski through traffic. 318, Saros comes with a save on Skinner at close range. That always troubles some Skinner. 441 of the first period, Saros comes up with a save on Rosen at 557 of the first period. Saros comes with a save on Skinner's one-timer teams back and forth trading opportunities. Now it's the Preds opportunity at 619 in the first period. Lukanen comes up with a save on Nyquist plus the follow-up jam by Luzon. 706 of the first. Saros comes with a save on Cousins plus the rebound follow-up. 935 of the first period. Lukanen now comes up with a save on O'Reilly's heavy shot. O'Reilly a noticeable presence early in this game at 940. Of the first period, it's Philip Forsberg's 13th goal of the season, breaking through for the Nashville Purse, giving them a 1-0 lead. It was a wrist shot off of O'Reilly's face-off win. Forsberg used the traffic still in the face-off circle to go ahead and use that as a screen to go ahead and beat Lukanen. Forsberg's 13th of the season gets the Preds on the boards, but at 10:54, it's Yakov Trenin's fifth goal of the season, which is a deflection off of Colton Sisson's long shot, giving the Nashville Purs a 2-0 lead. An incredible deflection in front by Yakov Trenin on this play. 12.02 of the first period. It's Lukanen coming up with the save on Parsonen at 13.11 of the first period. It's UC Saros coming up with the save on Ocposo at 14.31 of the first. It's Rossmi Stalin off to the box. Two minutes for hooking our first penalty call of the game. It's going to be Lukanen coming up with the save on O'Reilly. Then Lukanen another save on Nyquist. One more save on Parsonen plus the rebound jam before the end of the Nashville Purse power play. Nashville Purse pouring on the pressure, but Lukanen is able to hold 18 49 of the first period. It's Lukanen coming up with a save on O'Reilly from the slot. A robbery of a save with the glove left. O'Reilly looking up towards the rafters, wondering why, oh, why did that puck not find its way into the net? At the end of the first period, the Nashville Predators are outscoring Buffalo 2 0 and out shooting the Buffalo Sabres 14 to 11.
on the clean sheet and into the second period we're 124 in and it's Lucanen going to work early coming up with a save on Cole Smith off of the rush then at 201 coming up with a save on the captain Roman Yossi at 329 of the second period Lucanen comes up with a save on O'Reilly meddlesome O'Reilly yet again out there getting another scoring opportunity at 609 of the second period Susi Saros coming up with a save on Darlene the first shot on goal of the period for the Buffalo Sabres it comes at 609 of the period 736 of the second Lucanen comes up with a save on Gus Knight Quist 856 Luke and another save on Shen's long shot at 1002 of the second period right past the middle point of the game we see Luzon getting called for the trip and we see Olofsson being awarded a penalty shot and he is finishing easily with an explosive backhand to forehand move going high underneath the bar Olofsson's third goal of the season comes on the penalty shot putting Buffalo on the board the Nashville Purs still lead the Sabres two to one in this game and for UC Saros the third penalty shot he's faced against this season at 10 14 UC Saros back to work immediately the Buffalo Sabres gaining some momentum from that goal here's a save on Tuck at 10 25 Saros a save on Skinner at 11 59 Saros a save on Cousins at 12 28 UC Saros continues the work coming up with a save on Jost and then at 14 24 UC Saros another save on Skinner and at the 15 49 mark of the second period UC Saros coming up with a save on on Cousins' backhand, it is UC Soros putting in the work and keeping the Nashville Predators in this game. Buffalo Sabres gaining all kinds of momentum after scoring that goal in the penalty shot and just taking over the ice and tilting it in their favor here in the second period. At 16:39, Lukanen clocks back in, does a little bit of work, coming up with a save on Mark Jankowski as Jankowski is the only Predator to be able to break through in quite some time at 17:49 of the second period. It's Lukanen again coming up with another Another save on Jankowski again. So again, Jankowski seems to be the only Pred out there making things happen. At 1916 of the second periods, UC Saros coming with another save on Cousins. We at the end of the second period, we end up with a large scrum. Players have to be separated. It took quite some time to get the players off of the ice. At the end of the second period, it's two to one in favor of the Nashville Predators. But the Buffalo Sabres are now out shooting the Nashville Predators, 23 to 22 here in this game in Buffalo. Second day of back-to-backs for the Nashville Predators. Let's see what kind of legs they have left going into the third period. At the 20-minute mark, we would find out during intermission there would be matching minors called. It would be Krebs and Sissons. Krebs for Buffalo, Sissons for Nashville. Off to the box, two minutes each for roughing. So we would start the third period with a four-on-four scenario, and absolutely nothing would happen during that four-on-four scenario. That's why we find ourselves all the way at the 320 mark of the third period before we get the first shot on goal of the period and it's UC Soros coming up with a save on Kyle Ocpozo at 402 of the third it's UC Soros coming up with a save on Skinner follow that up 29 seconds later with another save on Skinner UC Soros and Skinner locked in battle in this game and they have been locked in battle for many many years actually 542 of the third period it's Lucan and coming up with a save Mark Jankowski again on the play for the Nashville Purs being one of the only ones to break through in the offensive McCarron setting the traffic in the screen in front of the first shot on goal for the period for the National Purse comes at the 542 mark of the third period at 638 of the third period. It's Lucanen coming up with a save on Luzon at 709 of the third period. It's UC Saros coming up with a sprawling desperation save on Cousins. It was the best save of the game. UC Saros completely laid out on the belly, making the save with the side of his body sliding way out of the crease, but maintaining the puck and keeping the puck from going into the net again. At 7.09 of the third period in a one-goal game, UC Saros coming up with easily the biggest save of this game. Highlight, real stuff, five-star save right here. You can add as many adjectives as you want to it. It's not going to quite add up to it. It was a great save and a timely save and an important save in a one-goal game. That was at 7.19. We're now at 7.30 of the third period. It's Forsberg. He goes wide on the breakaway. So after Saros comes up with the big sprawling save, Philip Forsberg goes the other way, gets a breakaway and ends up missing the attempt wide, tries the stuff and jam attempt two, three, maybe four times before finally has his stick removed from his hands and thrown like a javelin. The referee just kind of shrugged and looked at Philip Forsberg, who could not quite understand what happened right there. 8.49 of the third period. It's UC Saros going back to work, and this time it is a save on Jost at 10.11 of the third period. It's Saros coming up with a save on Cousins again. This is the 30th shot on goal for the Buffalo 
Sabres coming at the midway point of the third period. The Sabres just pouring on the offense. They continue on with that 11.30 of the third period as UC Soros has come up with a sharp angle save on Benson at the post. UC Soros locked into the post and tracked that puck perfectly at 13.39 of the third period. It's Lukanen coming up with a save on O'Reilly. Parson and getting to the net, going to the dirty area and setting the screen. At 14.24, though, it's UC Soros right back to work at important minutes right here. 14.24, Soros a save on Darlene. We would go a couple of minutes without a shot on goal, but 17.19, Soros comes up with another save on Darlene. Darlene was really wheeling and dealing and trying to make the play from the blue line out there. And he had some really good, strong looks at it. At the 18-minute mark of the third period, we get to the empty net scenario. Nashville Purs would do an incredible job keeping things mostly to the outside and mostly under control. At 19.22, Soros would have to come up with a save on Cousins. And at 19.59, right at the buzzer, UC Soros would come up with one last save. It would have counted if it had gotten past Soros. Your final in this game, the Nashville Predators strap in and hang on for seemingly the final 40-plus minutes of this game. They win this game 2-1. to one. The Buffalo Sabres outshoot the Nashville Predators 35-29. to 29. The Buffalo Sabres went from 11 shots on goal in the first to 23 at the end of the second to 35 at the end of the third. The Buffalo Sabres able to pour the pressure on the Nashville Predators. The Preds had 14 shots in the first and scored two goals, easily their best period. After that, declining results and also uh, declining gas mileage on the legs in the second night of back-to-back. But UC Soros showed why he's a franchise goaltender and did exactly what he needed to do on this second night of back-to-back. On this road trip in Buffalo, UC Soros steals the game in the third period, securing the one-goal victory for this Nashville Predators team. Impressive stuff for the Preds after losing to the New York Rangers on home ice just yesterday. You gave us 10 minutes. We gave you the entire game. That is the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We've got analysis, box score, all the numbers and opinions coming up and so much more right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to December the 5th, the year 2023, when the Nashville Purs were in Chicago to take on the Blackhawks. Head coach Andrew Burnett deployed his line combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, Nyquist, Sherwood, Parson, Evangelista, Trennan, Sissons, Jankowski, McCarron, and Tomasino, which means we have 11 forwards and 7D again. Yossi and McDonough lose on in Fabro, Stastny and Barry. Luke Shen is your 7th defenseman. UC Soros gets the start in net for the Nashville Predators. At 108 of the first period, it's Soderblom coming up with a save on Sherwood. It's the first shot on goal of the game. At 252 of the first period, it's Soderblom coming up with a save on Forsberg in close range. At 329 of the first period, it is Donato hitting the post off of the rush at 432. Soderblom back to work coming with a save on Sherwood. Sherwood's second shot on goal already in this game. At 557 of the first period, we've got our scoring breakthrough. First goal of the game goes to Chicago Blackhawks as Felino gets his third of the season. He brings the jam at the post, and the puck rolls up and over UC Soros, hits the post, hits Soros, hits the crossbar, hits Soros, then trickles down in and over the goal line. Good goal for the Chicago Blackhawks. Felino had a perfect view of it as he was bringing the jam right there from the side of the net. Chicago leads 1-0 here in the first period. 7-28 of the first, it's Soderblom coming with a save on Nyquist at 9-45. UC Soros come with a save on Tenorti from long range. At 10-43 of the period, UC Soros come with a save on Jones plus his rebound follow-up lightning quick kick out on this play at 12.02 of the first Soda Bloom comes with a save on Yossi who was crashing the slot hard great scoring chance for the Predators right there 14.03 of the first period it's Soda Bloom coming with a save on McCarron then at 15.22 another save on Barry zero whistles for nearly five minutes to end the first period also um, oh no shots on goal uh, National Predators outshoot the Chicago Blackhawks over the course of the first period 11-2 we go to the clean sheet in the second period, 137 in, and it's UC Saras coming up with a save on Kurashev at 211 of the second period. It's Luke Evangelista breaking through for the Nashville Purs, tying this game up at one apiece. It's Evangelista's fourth goal of the season. It was a rebound put back. Barry put the long shot on net. Evangelista got a deflection on it, then got to the loose puck first and puts it into the wide open net. Evangelista's fourth goal of the game ties this game up at one apiece at 237. So just seconds later, it's Mark Jankowski's first goal of the season. They rebound put back of Sisson's shot basically got the puck in the same exact location as Evangelista and put the puck into almost the same exact spot as Evangelista. 2-1 two, two, now in favor of the Nashville Purs. Lightning quick scores for the Preds but at 3:09, just as quickly Dickinson gets the game tied up at two apiece. His eighth goal of the season gives the Chicago Blackhawks their second goal of the game. So now we're tied at two apiece at 
3.09 of the second period after seeing virtually nothing happen in the first period and almost no whistles at the end of the period. Now it is just an onslaught of offense. That Dickinson goal was blocker side, wrist shot. There was some traffic definitely involved in the play. 4.32 of the second period. And Tuzi Saras coming up with a save on Gutman, 520 of the second period. Felino, his fourth goal, second of the game, fourth on the season. It's a wrist shot that beats Tuzi Saros. Now the Blackhawks suddenly lead 3-2, to two, a crazy roller coaster for the first five minutes of this second period. 725 of the second hit. Soderblom coming up with a save on Sissons. Tip in the low slot, an outstanding save and a great scoring chance. You know what? Good hockey all around by everybody involved in that play. Impressive stuff right there by Soderblom and by Sissons. 829 of the second period. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Forsberg at 927. Tomasino is off to the box. Two minutes for hooking. And yes, we're all the way at 927 of the second period. And it's our first penalty call of the game. UC Saros would come up with a save on Seth Jones. And overall, over the course of the two minutes, National Predators would have a very strong penalty kill against the Chicago Blackhawks power play. At 12-14 of the second period, it's Tenori now off to the box. Two minutes for tripping on Luke Evangelista. Evangelista using the Roman Yossi wheel play to earn this power play for his National Predators team. And it is the Nashville Predators converting on their first power play opportunity of the game. It's Joe Riley's 12th goal of the season, tying the game up at three apiece. It was a rebound backhand put back of Forsberg's initial shot. O'Reilly bringing the jam as he always does around the net, putting the rebound back in his 12th season ties the game up three apiece. We go to the 15-24 mark of the second period. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Forsberg at 16-17 of the second period. It's Reichel off the box. Two minutes, four hooking. You would never have known the Nashville Predators were on the power play if there wasn't a clock counting it down on the screen. No shots on goal for the Preds, barely any zone time, and honestly, it didn't seem like the Blackhawks were shorthanded at any point in time. So the Blackhawks did give up a power play goal on the previous Preds power play, but they were incredibly strong and basically put up a technically perfect penalty kill against the Predators here at the 16-17 to the 18-17 mark of the second period. 18-56 of the second back to 5-5 five and five hockey and Susie Sars come up with a save on Kirsch. Have a 19-16. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Nyquist. We hit the end of a wacky roller coaster ride of a second period. The National Predators have 25 shots on goal now. 14 in the second period Blackhawks have 17, so 11. 14 to 11 were the shots on goal in the second period. Incredibly high shot volume, incredible amount of offensive output. 24 seconds into the third period now. It's UC Saros coming up with a save on Anderson. The 116 mark of the third. It's Saros coming up with a save on Korchinski at 352. UC Saros coming up with a save on Vlasic at 603 of the third period. UC Saros coming up with a save on Donato plus the follow-up rebound opportunity. And here we are at 833, and it's UC Saros coming up with another save. Save, this time on Gutman. Notice I haven't mentioned uh, anything other than UC Saros coming up with saves at this point in the game because at the 10 minute mark, the middle of the third period, in a tied game, in a 3 3 hockey game, the Nashville Predators have yet to generate a single shot on goal in this third period. UC Saros keeping the Nashville Predators in with six saves over the course of the first 10 minutes, 11 45 into the third period. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Tomasino after an incredible soccer type play by Michael McCarron to keep the play alive. Live getting the shot for Tomasino, the first shot on goal for the National Predators comes at 11:45 of the third period. At 12:41 of the third, it's Soderblom coming up with the save on O'Reilly. The rebound by Nyquist trickles just wide of the post, just like the way Felino scored earlier in this game. We saw Nyquist almost get the puck to roll up and over the top of Soderblom, but this time it rolls over his body and then wide of the post. National Predators, a glorious opportunity. 13:23 here of the third. Saros comes up with save on Radish off of the rush. The ref took a sick bump while the play was developing. Managed to recover, get up, and be there to blow the whistle in time and see UC Saros come up with the save. It was a really good scoring opportunity by Radish off of the rush. Ref taking a bump aside. 14-41 of the third period. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Nyquist. 14-52. Forsberg off to the box. Two minutes for holding no matter how much he protested. There was no way he was going to get overturned on this call. Saros comes up with a save on Radish's redirect in the slot. This is exactly how the New York Rangers cashed in on their power play over the weekend against the Preds and this time UC Saros was able to stop this one. Radish's redirect from the slot stopped by UC Saros. 1704 of the third Saros comes with a save on Felino at 1823. Sort of long one more save on McDonough. We hit the end of regulation with each team earning a point. Now something, a weird caveat about these two teams. 
These were the only two teams in the Central Division that did not have an overtime or shootout loss. One of them will now be suffering that. We go into the three-on-three -three overtime, and we are 120 into that overtime. It's actually, UC Stars is coming up with a save on Connor Bedard, who seemed like he never left the ice during this overtime. 4.09 of the of the overtime session, it's Soderblom coming up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. The teams were going up and down the ice, but this was one of your less offensive outputs for this three-on-three -three overtime type session. 417 Saros comes up with a really strong save on Connor Bedard, and that would do it for the shots on goal in the overtime session for the game. National Furs would outshoot the Chicago Blackhawks 30 to 28, but we still have a shootout to go. Nyquist would go first for the Nashville Furs. He'd use the slow and low approach, go to the left, come on in, cut across the top, and easily score. On this opportunity right here on Soderblom, 1-0 Nashville Purs in the shootout. Bedard goes first for the Blackhawks. He hits the wrist shot glove side and just made it look as easy as possible. 1-1 now. O'Reilly goes second for the Preds. He hits the slow backhand. 2-1 now in favor of the Nashville Predators. Johnson is stopped by UC Saros. Philip Forsberg goes backhand high as well from the other side. Makes it 3-1 and wins the shootout for the Nashville Predators. Predators officially win the game 4-3. They outshoot the Blackhawks 32-20. 28. And for the Nashville Predators, uh, this was kind of a wild road game, but one of those where they found a way to get it done. They found a way to get two points in this game. Uh, there were moments where it looked like this game might slip away from the Preds in the second period, but they were able to maintain some discipline, some professionalism, come out, force overtime. doesn't matter if the Blackhawks get a point in this one. It's not going to really affect the Nashville Predators. The Predators are able to get the extra point. Now 2-0 and against the Blackhawks on season, as they should be, picking up two road wins in a row to close out this very quick road trip. Next game will be back home against Tampa Bay. That's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. A boring first period, an incredibly amazing second period, a kind of slow third period, a pretty good overtime, and a really good shootout. That's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We'll be right back on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Thanks so much for joining us for the Renegades of Puck 2023-2024 Nashville Predators season recap. We're doing it in chunks of five games, so we sure to appreciate you jumping along in the journey and checking out each and every part. Remember, you can check us out at renegadesofpuck.com. Check us out on social media, and we sure to appreciate each and every one of you for jumping in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. Stick taps, love, and respect.